This ice sculpture of our sun is really cool, so long as it doesn't spend too much time under our hot studio lights. To see prize-winning ice sculpture in a more natural setting, better go where Lee Cowan went, to Alaska. On the list of the coldest jobs on the planet, harvesting ice near the Arctic Circle holds a chilly distinction. These massive blocks are known as Arctic diamonds. So clear, you can read a newspaper through them. And every year, they're stacked on land, waiting for chisels and chainsaws to turn them into jewels. Look at that. With that, the World Ice Art Championships got underway in Fairbanks, Alaska recently. It's an annual race to see who can carve these, the biggest, baddest, most beautiful ice sculptures. Oh my God. Yes, that's good. All with a countdown clock ticking. We like to say it makes our winters go faster because <laughs> winters are long in Fairbanks. Six to Dick Brickley oversees the competition, which isn't for the faint of heart. Yeah. It is dangerous. This is no doubt about it. Knock on ice. This is really fast moving and dangerous. 18 teams of four people have six days to shape and mold more than 20 tons of ice each. We're doing an octopus taking down a ship and there's a girl driving the ship and she's not having it. <laughs> Buddy Rasmussen came here from San Antonio, Texas. How competitive are you? I want to win. <laughs> His teammate is from Houston. There's nowhere in the world where you can sculpt ice this big. He's so smooth at slicing ice, they call him Reverend Butter. We're all put here for a reason. This is my call and this is my reason. Jinichi Nakamura, a former potato farmer from Japan, is the man to beat this year. He's out to sculpt a giant dragon. He holds more ice carving world championships than anyone else here. And yet, despite his experience, he gets so nervous, he chain smokes through the whole competition. So how many cigarettes do you smoke while you're doing this? <laughs> he has reason to be anxious. Nipping at his heels are these folks. I've won 16 world championship titles. Uh, Heather's won seven. Yeah. Steve and Heather Bryce are carving a comic book. Every superhero from the Hulk yeah, she's, she's hot. To Wonder Woman. When you're roughing it out, you, you see the potential of it, but when you finish it, uh, it has the ability to give you an adrenaline rush. The race is grueling. Each team works 18 to 20 hours a day. Temperatures can drop to 50 below zero. Chris Foltz paid a big price for that last year. I had my metal earrings in and forgot about it and lost a nice chunk of my ear, but luckily it was just like the outside, so you can't really see it much, and it fell off before I got on the plane, so that was good. Piece of your ear fell off. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the danger of an ice collapse. <laughs> that was one of Junichi's sculptures. When he pushed the ice, past its limit. Is it dangerous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's died. Okay, it's it died. <laughs> yeah. But there is beauty, too, a sense of serenity, despite the chainsaws. There's just a certain magic to ice, especially carving at night. You hear the, the tools working away and the snow kind of flying through the air, through the lights, and then at the end, it's just like magic. It'll slowly evaporate as the winds hit it and it'll just look like glass. Ice carving is part brute force and part delicate dance. Portions of the sculptures are set in place with nothing more than water. Arctic glue, they call it. It instantly freezes the pieces together, as long as the air is cold enough. The downside, of course, is all this hard work will eventually go from this to this, melting is an occupational hazard. Alaska native Mark Chapin looks at that reality philosophically. 
you know, go back into the ground and eventually get back in, into the water source. So you're essentially carving from previous uh, ice carvings. All the carvings were going well, until that is, the clouds rolled in and the temperatures crept above freezing. I'm a little frustrated right now, but... Because? Uh, mainly because of the weather. So all this hard work is basically uh, one big pile of slush. Reverend Butter's pirate ship was sinking in its own water. You work with what you got, and in the end, you gotta be proud of what you did, so we are. Janichi's dragon almost seemed to be crying, and so was Janichi. The water was dripping off the sculpture, he said. The judge has even pushed back the finish to give the artist time to make adjustments. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Two meters. Every team used every minute. Right up until the final horn. The race was over. Drips or no drips. That is unbelievable. But no one really seemed to notice. Oh, wow. Crowds poured in to capture the finished works before they melted anymore. And the judges finally had their say. Third place realistic to the rescue. Steve Bryce, Heather Bryce. The Hulk and his superhero accomplices earned the Bryce team a spot on the podium. Buddy and Reverend Butter's pirate ship sailed its way into second place. Thank you all very much. But the one who carved out the top spot was, once again... Realistic first place, Janichi Nakamura for a fighter. Maybe all that smoking like a dragon paid off. As the crowds thinned, the air once again cooled. You could almost hear the ice sculptures themselves sigh with relief. Their integrity and the artists' reputations were safe. At least until the sun comes up.